All right. Hello, everyone. It's been a little while. I am back. I'm a little bit later than I promised. It was a very busy week. Um, I'm Jeff, also known as Captain Quicks, the uh, director of events for Board Game Geek. And it's been a busy week, as I said. We had a lot of things to get done for our cruises coming up soon, as well as opening um, opening registration for BGGCon yesterday. So it's a very busy day. So I was not able to stream on Monday, but I am here today on Friday. And I hope you enjoy uh, your time here with us. All right. Uh, welcome. Our first time chat. Uh, Aldi Prime. Aldi Prime says happy birthday. That is the one and Aldi, Aldi, one and Aldi, only Aldi, who just so happens to know that my birthday was now two days ago. I am officially an old man, I think, or at least officially halfway dead. I turned 50 two days ago. Uh, so this is a belated birthday present that I got to spend my Friday afternoon streaming uh, one of my favorite games. And uh, I hope you enjoy your time here with us. Uh, if anyone is in the chat, uh, just tell me real quick to let me know if audio is okay. And uh, if that audio notification came through all right, I uh, just want to make sure everything's sounding good before we get started here. We're playing Frosthaven. Uh, scenario number two, Algox Scouting. Uh, so we're still uh, early on in our campaign here, if you're just now joining us. Uh, Aldi says, vocal sounds good. Fantastic. All right. Well, every so often I will peek my head over to look at the chat over here and make sure I'm not missing anything. But other than that, let's uh, dive right in. Let me switch over here. Okay. We are looking at Frosthaven. As you remember, we started on our way to Frosthaven up here in the mountains, just off screen here, and uh, attacked by some wolves, came down through the mountains into Frosthaven, right as the town was trying to fend off an attack of an Algox raiding party. We defeated that raiding party with... I guess you could say some help of the town guard. They didn't help that much, but at least we kept them all alive, which helped the morale of the town. There was a scout who tracked the raiding party back to their uh, hidey hole, and we're now going to go after them or at least see what's up. We had a choice, and we're going to take the back way around into what might be a secret passage. All right. J Rock says playing Frosthaven tonight, scenario 10. All right. Well, uh, hey, did you uh, take this branch uh, uh, campaign or uh, scenario number two, or did you go for scenario number three? Let me know if I'm in for a tough time or if you went the d uh, different route. Okay, let's reveal here our map. Uh, all I've done so far is laid out the tiles, uh, the base tiles, uh, because I was running late and didn't get a full setup done, but I think I do have all the pieces in front of me that I am gonna need. All right, um, let me get this set up here. My handy Frosthaven assistant. And we're going to go set the scenario. I'll got scouting. And we need to add two normal archers. And let me see where we need to do that. So archers is this. Looks like it's going to be number four and number six. And they, for two players, they are elite. Ooh. Uh, no, they're regular. Okay. Oh, that it went yellow because it's telling me to add an elite guard. Okay, I'll do that in a second. So one of ours is up here and here. And then we have a snow rock 
which I believe is obstacle there. And then coming down over here. And then we've got elite number one. Elite guard here, right there. Okay. All right, and we have our human banner spear, Emmy. Fan favorite, Emmy Hadwise. And looks like we can start in any of these five spaces here, so we're just going to get set up there for a moment. And our Valrath Deathwalker, Chris. Chris Roll, Elder Shadow. Um, I'm going to be thinking out loud as I set up the hands, uh, choose battle goals. I've not done any prep. In fact, I haven't even pre-read the scenario introduction yet. So we're going to do that all together. Uh, I think we've got now our first room all set up here. Yes, that looks good. And I'm just going to look up real quick just to make sure green means obstacle as opposed to difficult terrain. I think purple is difficult terrain, but I can never remember which is which. So, yep, yeah, purple is difficult terrain, green is obstacle. Okay, and there's a little X on there to remind me. Okay. Um, before we get into playing the scenario, we need to do a uh, road event. I'm just going to uh, make sure I haven't printed out. I'm sure there is a flow chart out there. I had one for Gloomhaven and I'm sure there's one for Frosthaven. I just haven't taken the time to find it yet. But I think the only thing I need to do is road event, set things up uh, and the app's going to set up the loot deck for me, scenario level, all that, battle goals and we dive right in. Okay. So, yes, we're in good shape. All right. Road event. We are still in the summer. And since we're traveling away from, Frost, from uh, the outpost of Frosthaven, we need a summer road event. Okay. Summer road event. Here we go. You are feeling a tad hungry as you walk down the road. You're considering stopping for a meal when you come across a thicket of bushes covered in thorns and red tin berries. The berries look delicious, but you know red tin berries are wildly poisonous. Option A, apply the berry juice to your weapons. Option B, Pluck a berry and add it to one of your existing potions. Hmm. That is an interesting choice. Add berry juice to a weapon or existing potions. Well, Emmy, the banner spear, has some spears. She also rallies other summons to her defense. Deathwalker doesn't really have much in the way of weapons although we just did get we did just recently acquire for her craft her a crude bow we don't have a lot in the way of potions we don't have any existing potions yet we have some potion components so um, because we don't have any actual potions if I've got nothing to add it to yet, then I'm thinking we go with weapons. Uh, yeah, shield, shoes, cloak, and spyglass, bow, and boots. So we're going to add it to our weapons here. Option A. Um, educated. Let's see. Is anybody educated? Emmy is armored, persuasive, and resourceful. Uh, Chris is arcane, outcast, and persuasive. So they're both persuasive. 
We're not educated. Otherwise, the bush's thorns stab you as you reach for the berries. Before you can pluck enough to coat your weapons, waves of disorientation and nausea overcome you. Apparently, the thorns are poisonous as well. Well, that's not good. All characters without armored start the next scenario with two damage and poison. Well, fortunately, Emmy is armored, but unfortunately, Chris is not. So, um, two damage and poison. All right, let me uh, just remind that we've got poison over here. For Chris and two damage so that was a bummer there's no icon on the card so that means it's taken out of the game all right uh, so Chris yikes two damage right off the bat not good for her because she's are squishy only has six health all right, we'll have to do something about that. And being poisoned is going to be especially not good. All right. Hey, we have a first-time chatter here. Hawkman 4K. I see painted minis. I get excited. All right. Let me... All right, I'm going to show... I showed them off the very first time. I'm going to show them off again because I am rather proud of my painted minis here. Paint job. Let's see. Are you going to focus? Let's say block camera here there we go that is emmy hadwise our human banner spear and she has a couple of uh colorful banner cloaks on the back um i hand painted those right before starting so far these are the only two characters i've painted um i might paint a few more of the starter ones this weekend we'll see if i have time and here's chris Chris Roll, Elder Shadow, our Death Walker. So there we go. All right. Very good. Oh, all right. Hawkman replied with some kind of an icon quote. I need to put my glasses on because I'm an old man. Let me see what he said. Ah, something like very nice. Okay. I'm still getting used to these progressives. As I said earlier, I'm an old man now. About two, three weeks ago, I finally broke down and got bifocals or progressive lenses and uh, still adjusting. Okay. Yes, very nice. All right. So I think we've done all our setup from uh, the event. Now we get to read the introduction set everything up and then decide on our battle goals and card selection. I think that's the correct order of things. All right, yep. I'm not going to find the exact entry, but I'm going to say that that is good enough. Okay, Algox Scouting. We're up in the Copperneck Mountains. Um, what do those dots mean? I think they relate to which path we are on. The uh, complexity of the scenario. So this is a w lower complexity scenario, which is good for us. All right. The scenario is complete when all enemies in it are dead and Ice Sheet Alpha has been destroyed. At the end of that round, read paragraph 77.3. Okay. Introduction. Asatha is talking to us. She's the uh, mayor of Frosthaven, and I can't remember what kind of a voice I used from her last time, so... All of our characters, just so you know, they might change voice inflection from time to time because I'm not 
a professional voice actor, but I do like to dabble. Here we go. They'll be tired from the raid, so this is your moment. Satha had explained, pointing you toward the foothills of the Copernic Mountains, where her scout tracked the Algox attackers. I doubt you'll be able to fight them all on your own, but maybe you can find another way to subdue them if you get close. On the other hand, they'll be worn out after this little battle, so feel free to test your luck. Just remember, even a tired Algox is strong enough to rip someone in two. You head to the area indicated by the scout, following the Algox's trail toward a wicked-looking mountain. As you draw nearer, you see that the trail splits. The main force returned to the near side of the mountain, but a smaller group peeled off to hike around to the eastern face. The scout told you he suspected there was a back door to the Algox settlement, and you follow the smaller group's trail, hoping he was right. The path narrows as you approach the steep eastern face, winding up to an, high, to an, high, to an overlook high above. Peering upward, you make out the faintest glimmer of light, but then a shape blots it out. A body, large and white, tumbles over the rocky ledge like a boulder slamming against the jutting rocks. A dead Algox brawler, just like the ones who attacked Frosthaven, lies at your feet. Judging by its injuries, the rocks weren't its only problem. There's a fight up above. You scramble toward the top, hoping to make it before the battle is through. When you're halfway up, another furry shape appears over the ledge. More intruders, she scoffs. You will never open the sky hall. This place belongs to the ice. Your shock at the fact that an Algox just spoke your tongue is quelled as the speaker lifts a huge boulder and hurls it down at you. Time to move. All right, when scenario door one is opened, which is right here, read paragraph 27.1. All right, well, I think there's Nothing but to get into it here. First off, battle goals for Emmy. We've got Die Hard. Never have your hit point value drop below half your maximum. Round it up. Now, she does have a very high hit point, so she could take 5 out of 10. Sluggard. Perform a long rest while, your mac while at your maximum hit point value after you have already suffered damage. So take damage, heal, and then long rest. Prohibitionist, never use a potion. Guess what? We don't have any potions. That one is a slam dunk. All right. That feels almost cheating, but this game is hard enough. Sometimes you have to take the easy wins. All right. For Chris, we've got Rambler. End no more than three of your turns in the hex in which you started the turn except when long resting. So got to gotta move every turn. That's going to be difficult. Well, I, we're probably doing a, a fair amount of moving. However, she does spend some turns where she's just acting from her shadows. So we'll see. Assassin, kill an enemy before it takes its first turn. Double check mark. Oh, that's tempting. But this guard right in front of us is 12 hit points. The two archers in the back are only 5 hit points. I don't know if she can... Can she get that far away? I'll have to look at her cards. I know she can drop shadows, but I don't know how far away they can be. Third option, shirker. Kill an enemy not adjacent to you while you are adjacent to another enemy. Ooh, how do shadow tokens play into that? Um, are you considered adjacent to all of your shadow tokens or in all of your shadow tokens? I'll have to think about that for Chris. Let's, uh, let's pick cards real quick. 
All right. Joe says, hello, everybody. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. Speed Racer says, Dingus could do 12 damage in the first turn. Well, yes, but Dingus is also level, what are you now, level 5? For those uh, playing along at home, Speed Racer is my younger brother. One of my younger brothers, and they're all younger because I'm the oldest. Um, and we are currently playing Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion together. He has a, a big damage dealer. All right. Uh, so Emmy needs 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Are there any of the uh, more twitchy cards I want to put in? Um, oh, attack to range 4 with advantage. Well, that's pretty cool. Why didn't I have that in here before? Um, resolved Courage. Ooh, you get an ally right behind you and you attack three all around. Incendiary Throw. Um, splash Damage, it looks like. That's pretty cool. What would I take out? What are some of these movements that I didn't really... This Pincer Movement, well, it is attack five. Um, but I, d I don't remember using that one so much. Um, tip of the spear is going to be kind of tough. And that's two straight out. I think it's more common that we'd have three around us from Resolved Courage. Um... Rallying cry. Unbreakable wall. Yeah, let's we're gonna play around just a little bit. I'm gonna take out Unbreakable Wall and put in Resolved Courage, because that sounds like fun. And then uh, we'll get rid of um, deflecting maneuver and put in driving inspiration. All right, so that's going to give us some new options here. All right, and let's get your items up and running. Let's see. Are these on screen still? Yes, just barely in screen. Very good. All right. Never use a potion. I'll remember that. Okay. Just getting my cards set up in these awesome BGG card holders. All right, I just, I have 10 or 11? I have 10, okay. So what do I need to get rid of? Oh, that other X I didn't drop out. Incendiary throw, yeah, we're not using that one. There we go, 10 cards. All right, as I was saying, awesome BGG card and token holders. I have all 10 cards here set up for me to uh, review here just off screen. So that's, that's kind of nice to play with. All right, we need room for Chris. We're going to put you right here just right for now. Um, you've got boots. and a crude bow and you're poisoned okay and there we go and room for your deck up over here All right, and let's see. Do we want to bring in any of your X cards? 
Wave of Anguish. For each shadow token on the map at the start of this action, perform attack three from each one of the shadow tokens. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, but it does go lost. But that is pretty, pretty awesome. Forceful Spirits attack two, target two, range two. And if there's knight, it's some extra damage and an XP. Um, but we get to move around to our different shadow tokens pretty well. And then heal to uh, target allies occupying hexes with shadow and self. So we can heal everybody in a shadow token. That's cool. And the bottom is move all shadow tokens up to six hexes, but it goes lost. Hmm. I'm still trying to figure out how to play Chris uh, that well. So I don't know that I want to mix any of these in just yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to think about it. We're going to set those aside for now. Um, Chris gets 11 cards. So we're just going to play with the basic level one cards here. All right. And as I'm looking at these cards, a lot of them say perform the attacks as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow. It doesn't say consider yourself adjacent to the shadow. So I'm going to say we're going to go with Shirker. Kill an enemy not adjacent to you while you are adjacent to another enemy. And if we attack from the shadow, that will still count. I might be wrong. I'm not going to take the time to look it up on the FAQ. If somebody else does know offhand whether that would not apply, then, uh, you know, yell at me in the chat and I'll swap to a different battle goal. But we'll leave that there for now. All right. I think we are ready to get started. Okay, so where do we want to start? Theoretically, this is going to be the closest spots for us. Two away from this big elite guard. Um, health 12. That's, that's bad. Archers are pro we've probably got one round before we have to worry about the archers. Uh, unless, let's see if Chris, she's got some major drop out shadow tokens. Um, place one within two, doesn't go lost. Um, Call to the Abyss puts out shadow tokens wherever enemies die. I feel like that's not going to be as awesome. There was one that put out a whole bunch all at once, though. Uh, yeah, place three within three spaces. That goes lost. Uh, let's see. And then shadow step, place one in the hex you are occupying after you move six. So she could just run all the way around and get in range of the archers, which is usually not a good idea. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, she could get all the way over there. Um... But, and maybe kill one of those archers if we go back to the assassin side of things. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, she could get adjacent to this archer right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does she have enough power to take out... Well, Fluid Knight, yeah. 
You know what? Let's try it. It's one card that goes lost, but it might get us. I'm going to back up here and go for the double check mark assassin goal. Because she also has the initiative modifier boots as well. Um, so she's going to shadow step and fluid knight. So shadow step on 19. She moves six and then place a shadow token in the hex you are occupying. And then Fluid Knight is an attack five. Perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow token, then remove the shadow token. Well, she will be performing that. Um, oh, actually, no, we could do it with Eclipse. No, we can't because we, we need to move and then place it. Okay, yeah, we're going to stick with that. We're going to place and then immediately lose a shadow token, but it might get us. It might get us an, a, a double check mark battle goal. All right, so that is Chris Roll's turn. And then what is Emmy going to do? And hopefully, Chris is going first or close to first. Ooh, well, it'd sure be nice. If Emmy could heal Chris, because uh, she's got that poison on her. Um, she does have some healing. Um, regroup. Let's her heal to range to and give regenerate which would be awesome. Um, she's got to go absolutely f before Chris runs off, though, to do that. Um, set for the charge. That's only for this round. All right. I feel like, yeah. Um, We'll do that. This will give us a, a little bit of damage against the big guy. And we have a resubscriber. Let's see, who is this? Oh, those glasses. Tiny Fire, I think that is. Tiny Fire 5, resubscribed. Oh, let's see, how many weeks? I got to get used to these glasses. Six months. Okay. And they're currently on a one-month streak. All right. Well, welcome back, Tiny Fire. That's great. Glad to hear it. And especially thank you for resubscribing to trigger the audio notification because I've missed those in the past. But I'm glad to see that's working. All right. We're just going to do, you know, I'm not going to try and make the absolute best choice every single time. Uh, I'm just going to try and find something good and uh, keep this moving because, well... You're all here watching for a reason, I guess. But sometimes me just sitting here and thinking is not the most exciting thing going on. All right. So um, we've got Emmy at six. And uh, we've got Chris at theoretically 19. But she can decrease that by 10 or increase it by 10 depending on what the archers do or what the initiative of everybody else is so i'm trying to remember here what do i press to draw there we go draw 16 all right so we do we want to make sure the archer yeah, we can go. Um, oh, no, we have to go before the archers. We do have to go before the archers because that's the whole thing we're setting up. It's not the guard. So, Chris, um, how do I... I don't know if the app is going to let me change her number. I think that's one of the downsides here. Can I... That's damage. I don't know that I have no way to drag or change her target number. All right. Well, we just know that she's now on nine going before the archers. 
Uh, if anybody has used this Xhaven Assistant before and can tell me if there's a way to change your initiative number now, uh, let me know. But we have used our boots, so I'm going to tap those. And she is now at nine. The important thing, though, is Emmy does go first. Uh, heals Chris, which uh, all d uh, does is take away her poison. Uh, and then also gives regenerate. Okay. Um, and Emmy is set for the charge. Anybody moving next to her will suffer two damage. All right. So that will get discarded. And that's everything there. Oh. Crap. It's been a while since I've played. I just did two top cards. We can't do that. So let me pick a different bottom card because I knew I had to do the top up there. So she's not going to be dealing damage. Nothing else has happened yet. Um, oh, what do I want to do with the bottom cards? Um, we will summon. Let's summon one of our banners here. Might as well, right? Um, I think we will... Banner doesn't move and adds to attacks. Banner of Hope doesn't move and it adds range and healing. So yeah, we're going to summon our regular basic reinforcement. That is this guy here. Um, and we will put him right here in the middle. Let's see. Um, that guy's moving up and attacking hard, but uh, we'll just do that that way. Okay. Now we have uncheated, um, and we do get one XP. For that and I think that's it <coughs> I have a very loud sneeze I hope I turned away enough for that that I didn't just blow out your eardrums um, okay okay so Emmy's taking her turn the Algas Archers, Hasty Assault, Move 3, Attack 2, Range 4. But they don't go yet because Chris goes first. Um, all right, very important. Let's see what we can do here. So she's going to move 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Drop a Shadow Token right there. We're about to take it right back off again, but that's okay. Um, and then this card goes lost, unfortunately, but it's worth two check marks. Then attack five, perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow token, then remove the shadow token and create knight. So knight and XP. And here we go. All right. We want a, I don't even want to say it, but I will. We want a zero or better. We got a plus two. Boom. All right. So that is seven damage to number four. Um, Archer number four. Seven damage and you're gone. Okay. And we drop a loot token. And as long as we succeed at the scenario, you got your battle goal. All right. Hooray. And that does not go lost. That is just discarded, which is nice. We'll just set that up down there. All right. Now, the other archer takes his turn. Um, move three, attack two, range four. Does not have to move at all. Fortunately, um, 
Chris just moved into range. However, we forgot Chris's regenerate. She's about to lose it, but before we forget, she does heal one from that regenerate. Um, and then let's hope uh, this archer misses. All right. Um, Okay, so it is attack two, and that's a zero, so that's two damage. And regenerate goes away. All right, well, was worth it. We'll try and get you healed up some more as well, uh, or you'll be running away from this other archer. Yeah, well, you need to take out this other archer. Okay, that shadow token went away. Okay, Archer's turn. We have the Algox Guard. Move to attack five. So it's going to move to one, two, and I believe is going to attack the summon uh, because in general the summon goes right before the summoner. Um, I could have it attack if I moved up, moved him up there, but no, the, the summon is the focus cause it's a, a tie that way. So, um, just popped out, but take one for the team. Cause that's a big hit. Attack five minus one is four. Summon is dead. I forgot to bring the summon out in the app, but, uh, only has one health, so we'll just put it over here in the discard pile. That's the nice thing is that our summon does not go lost. All right, so that was the guard's turn, and I think we're done. Okay, one whole round. Um, next round, what are we going to do? All right. Um, Because of that extra damage, uh, Chris can't really take a whole lot more pounding, but if she can just take this guard out, that would be nice. So, um, she doesn't have, she doesn't have big damage cards. So I wonder if she's running away. We do have night out here, but I don't know how that's going to help us. We could uh, attack three at range five. So that's kind of cool. We could open this door, but that's probably a bad idea. We don't necessarily want to bring more enemies into the mix here. Um, this, uh, what is this, uh, guard is probably going to move pretty slow. I wonder if Emmy runs away from the guard to come help with the archer. What would that look like? That would be a long run. Uh, she can add jump. Um, oh, she actually has the traveling cloak to give her one more hit point. Um, I don't, is this going to let me increase? It's not going to let me increase health. So. Here's another case of where an item is changing something in the app that uh, I'm going to have to go edit the character somehow directly because of that item. I'll figure out how to do that later. All right. So moving. Oh, you're right there. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight just to be able to do anything interesting. She's got a javelin, which is range three. So to get from range three to this guard would be here or here. And that's still too far away. So I don't think Emmy can come to help. She does. She can move four. That's about it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's still too far away. And she doesn't have anything that would add range. All right. So I think uh, Chris is backing off. The earliest she can go is fourteen. Um, but there's no move on that fourteen. It's attack two, range two. So she could attack and then run away with 14. So let's do that. And the biggest move she has is four. That's our eclipse card. But one, two, three, four does help maybe. So, all right. That's, let's just see what happens. Hopefully we're not gonna kill Chris uh and leave this all to emmy by herself this could be a shorter stream than i thought it might be all right chris is just gonna have to deal some major beat on this guard here but she needs an ally to do all of her big attacks um, she has a couple of ranged attacks I keep thinking D&D. There's no attack of opportunity if she backs up. So, um, actually, if Emmy gets to here, one, two, three, four, and she moves to here, we are lined up for tip of the spear. That is an interesting thought. Earliest time we can get there is 28. So we need to go after 28. Um, oh, that would let her move two more. And that would put her at rallying cry if I did that. Because I move here or here. One, two, three, four, and then she could move one, two. Um, basically, I can attack three with immobilize with pierce, although this guy does not have any shield, or with disarm. I like the disarm idea because then he can't attack. Um, or wound. I could do it with wound, but that's the bottom card I need. So we're going to do combined effort with Rally and Cry. That's what you're doing. And this is what you're doing. All right. Oh, she's going on 14. Why did I say 28? Oh, because I didn't realize I had pulled the card over here already. So we could actually go earlier. But I still like that idea of that. So we're just going to take our beating. Um, so, Emmy is 32 and Chris is 14 trying to get out of the way of that archer let's see how we did not good they both go before Emmy can get a chance to move over so Emmy might be losing some cards here um, oh wait no I keep confusing. I keep confusing. That's all right. We are okay. Chris is going first. And she's the one who needs to run away, valiantly, valiantly run away. So, um, does she attack to range two first? Because when she goes here, we actually, I think we need to focus on the guard. She's going to be two from the guard as well. So I think, yeah, I think we want to deal damage to the guard. 
So move first, one, two, three, four, and then uh, attack two, range two. Uh, we're not gonna remove any shadow tokens because we don't have any. Be nice if we did. Um, so it's just attack two. But we're gonna get a two X, right? We're gonna get a minus one. So one damage, every little bit helps. All right, so there's no XP there or there, and they just get discarded. Now, uh, now the guard has shield one. Remember what I just said about having no shield? Um, he didn't get it until just now, so Chris was able to shoot at him first. Retaliate two. Well, that's going to be a bad day for Emmy, but that's okay. Um, at least is not attacking, so that's nice. Nothing special on the archer. Move to attack three at range four. That is just enough. Um, because one, two, range one, two, three, four. And Chris is within range. All right. So this is going to hurt. Um, let's hope for a minus one. Or a miss, right? That would be even better because it's attack three. So attack three. Two X, attack six. Well, we are certainly negating that. One card out of our hand or... Uh, two out of the discard pile. I'm kind of wanting, let's say I, for, I for sure want Eclipse. And I think I really want Fluid Knight. That attack five is pretty awesome. So I think it's one out of our hand and it's more cost efficient to do it that way anyway. Um, so what's going lost? Um, I feel like um, I feel, uh, I don't know. Um, Strength of the Abyss is a nice one to set up early, but I haven't set it up yet. Um, we're going to let... Uh, Call of Doom go, because it's just one attack from all shadow tokens, but uh, Call of Doom is going lost. We're negating that damage. Okay. That was um, the archer. Emmy's turn. Okay. Uh, move two and grant two allies within range to move two. And so we're moving. We're setting up Rallying Cry. So Oh, I read that wrong. I think this is okay. We need to be on either side of this guy. Um, I can, I want to get there. So these two, those two, basically surrounding him with only one space between us. That, that. Um, I kind of want these two just to make forward progress. So we're gonna do that and that. And, oh, this is just off screen. Sorry, y'all, can't see that. So we did um, this so we could set up this. All right, attack three with disarm and get an XP. So get the XP. You're going to get the disarm no matter what. Um, and then attack three. Plus zero. Three more damage. All right, down to eight. That's a good sign. Okay. That is the end of the round. 
Okay, now what? All right. Um, that archer's going to be getting closer. We want to get closer to Chris. We also want to heal Chris if we can. Um, summoning the Banner of Hope. At the start of their turns, grant allies within range three. Heal oneself. So this is just going to let us heal uh, multiple turns. I think we do that. Yep. I think we do that uh, just to give everybody some hope. And that slowly, we spend a couple of turns here. That'll get uh, Emmy or get Chris some health back. Oh, speaking of damage, we forgot uh, the Algox guard had retaliate, so Emmy does have to take two damage. Okay. And so we're doing that for our bottom. We need something awesome for the top, which means we're not moving and we're going before Chris so that the banner is up. And she gets health or uh, heal one at the start of her turn. So um, I can attack three with disadvantage, or I can just do a basic attack two. Or, well, if I don't get, if I move, Emmy has no way to give us a move. If I don't put the Banner of Hope up and move, I do have, I am kind of set up for this pincer movement. No, I let Emmy move into place for the pincer movement. That's what I do. Yes. Okay. Because it's attack five. All right. So Emmy's going to slide one more space down. I'm sorry. Chris is going to slide one more space down to set up the pincer movement. We know the guard's not attacking because he's been disarmed. And we'll get the Banner of Hope up. Um, no. Grr. Um, give up one health to get five. It's a question of when does Chris go? We want her to go before our turn for this, but we want her to go after our turn for this so that she gets one more health. I think the five attack is worth it. Go... Um, Maybe one less health for, for Chris to get. Um, okay, so um, I think Chris is just going to do kind of a basic move um, and basic attack, not a basic a move. Um, she's got a move and poison range one, so she can poison our, uh, gar, our, um, Algox guard and make him deal, take more damage. That sounds pretty good. Um, and 64 is before 69 if we go that route. It's going to leave us open to attacks from the archer, but uh, I don't know that we're really going to have a chance to go before the archer. The other thing is, yeah, let's just, we'll try and go before the archer as much as we can. So she's going to go on 28. Here we go. But uh, Emmy's still going on 69. Okay. 28 for Chris and 69 for Emmy. All right. I feel like we made this one a little harder than it needed to be by getting, making sure we got Assassin. But hey, two check marks is two check marks. We'll, we'll be grateful later. All right. Uh, at least we do still go before the archer. Okay, so 
we're going to move three. We're just going to move one, come down here, and poison the guard. So he is disarmed and poisoned. He's having a really rough day. I don't know why he, he uh, thought he should show up for this. That's here. And then this is just going to be a basic attack uh, because I don't want to take the disadvantage and it's only two damage anyway. So basic attack two, minus two. Well, at least we got it out of the deck. That's still unfortunate, though. But we did poison him for Emmy's attack. All right, that was Chris's turn. Archer, shoot foot. So um, move to attack to range five and uh, immobilize. I think, oh, no, she can peek over around the corner, darn it. So closest, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're the same either way. Uh, Emmy or Chris roll went first. So if she goes one, two, range one, two, three, four, and from that point of the hex, she can see this point of the hex. So she does have, this archer does have line of sight around the corner here. So immobilizing. So attack two, range five, immobilize. So Chris is getting immobilized. Need to remember that. Actually, I'm going to put it on her. I don't see it. I'm not going to bother with it. It's on here. Just need to remember Chris is immobilized for her next turn. Um, okay. And then attack two. Minus two. Yay. Zero. All right. So it makes up for the minus two we took. All right. Algox guard, move four, attack three, doesn't have to move. Can't attack because he is disarmed. So we will um, take off the disarm. But is poisoned. Emmy sets up the banner of hope. That is our blue banner. Let me find our blue banner here. And we're going to set that right here so that start of your turn within range three, gain a health. Um, okay, that gives us two XP. And uh, it will go lost when it is destroyed. It has four health. All right, but... The key being, we have set up this pincer movement, uh, which is going to, this poor guard. I mean, I'm not that sad, but he's now muddled too. All right. Attack five with poison means six damage. There we go. All right, down to two. Okay, and nothing goes, oh, and that is an XP. Uh, but nothing goes lost. We do need to leave our banner of hope out here though. All right, how are we doing? Anybody still with me over here? Take a quick uh, orange break, orange slices. All right. So we're going to start to get some health. We could both use it as long as we stay within three of that uh, banner of hope. Feels not awesome burning that early, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Okay. 
We're not set up for tip of the spear or resolve courage. I feel like um, I'm going to let Chris deal with this guard here and throw a javelin at the archer. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, huh. I could do that. Yeah, I like that idea. So, um, not move, throw the javelin. Oh, the one, it's one, two, far away. One, two, three, four. And it's Chris that has the add range, not Emmy. Mm. So I can't get the plus one that way. Um, does Chris take care of this archer that's just been harassing her? Um, attack three, range three. One, two, three. Yeah, she can drop a dark fog there. Um, but it goes lost. Attack three just for one target and it goes lost. That doesn't seem smart. Um, Place one character token. Not him. Any place can. Okay, so that that means it's just uh, looking at Call to the Abyss. Just reading through it again. I can set up. I can designate one target, and when that target dies, I can put a shadow goes there. But I can only do that to one target at a time. Um, we really haven't set up our shadow tokens much yet. If we do the bottom of Call of the Abyss, that'll just get one out there. And she doesn't need to move if she's going to do a basic attack to take out this guard. So we'll do that. And then a uh, basic attack on 50. She's starting to have pretty high in initiative numbers. So... Um, Step out and attack, move one, push two within range three. But that's the bottom of the javelin, and I said I was going to throw the javelin. Um, I want to move one so I get within range and don't. Oh, I could push the guard further away into the corner doesn't really matter but you know might as well yeah let's put baby in a corner no duh I'm doing the top part of javelin so I can't do the bottom part of javelin I just need a basic attack um, and we will since we're going 21 we'll do 67 for well no I, I want a low initiative for next turn too so we'll do six unless uh, this actually gives us options to move a bunch okay so next round Chris is on 50 and Emmy is on six all right so, Emmy, start of turn, heals one, thanks to the Beacon of Hope. And then moves th four, throw a Javelin at three. So we might as well move while we can move. Um, one, two, I don't want to get adjacent, though. 
and there's no point in going further up because that's just further away um, since the door is down there. So yeah, we'll just do that. And then throw this javelin uh, right at this archer here. And you know what? I'm going to do it with advantage. See if we can maybe find that plus two or that two X and just take out this archer before it takes his turn. How does that sound? All right, Joe says good so far. All right, good to hear. Here we go with advantage on the archer. Well, I hope it's better than that. Well, we're definitely found all of our zeros. So three damage on the archer. Okay, uh, nothing special. That archer moved to attack three range four, doesn't have to move. He's got uh, Emmy right in front of him, so is going to attack two and miss. How awesome is that? Um, things are starting to turn our way just a little bit. And then Chris is um, putting out a shadow token within two range two so we'll put out a shadow token right there for now and then top is just basic attack um, plus one is more than we need especially since he was poisoned so that guard is down and we get a loot token all right And nothing here is XP or lost or anything like that. Okay, last round before we long rest. Because um, I'm down to two cards for both my characters, and there's one enemy with only two health left. So let's make sure that happens. Um, we did use up our advantage, so we can't guarantee it happening. But we will do our best here. So basic attack will hopefully just kill this archer. Um, loot one and then teleport to a hex with a shadow token. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, or move a shadow token up to five. So that's the cards that... Emmy is going to, or I'm sorry, that Chris is going to play, and these are the cards that Emmy is playing. Let's see, we did both of those. Oh, we need to create wind. And next round. All right, I, all I have to really do is decide on initiative, and I want to go as early as possible, hopefully before this archer. So Emmy is going to go at 10 and Chris and I want Chris I want Emmy to go before Chris so that Emmy can just basic attack and take this guy out. Um, Chris is going at 46. Okay. Good. We do go first. All right. So Emmy, let's just look. None of our tops matter. So we're just going to basic attack, which means I can't take advantage of the number 10 on the bottom, add plus one to your next attack, because I need to use it as a basic move to get there. Um, all right. So um, start of turn, Emmy heals one. Um, It's going to be hard to remember this traveling cloak, but we all that matters is if she were ever to go to zero, we know that she actually has one more than that. So we need to remember that. Um, did Chris, the turn she just took, the banner of hope was up, so she needs to heal one as well. All right, because we had that banner up the turn before all that. Y'all need to be reminding me of these things because I forget. 
All right, and she's going to get another health here as soon as she takes her turn. So Emmy just took her turn. So just basic move, basic attack. Um, nothing special up there. And boom, plus one is what we need. So that archer is down and loot token. All right, which means uh, Chris can kind of just do whatever she wants. Either loot one and then teleport to hex with a shadow token or move a shadow token up to five hexes. Um, you know, being able to bring out a shadow beast right before we open this door over here sounds pretty cool. Um, I don't think these guys can loot for us, though. But we're going to cheese the system here just a little bit um, by taking this time of no enemies to do some setup and some looting, I think. So... Um, Uh, yeah, um, out of cards, long rest all of next turn and choose what gets lost. Um, one, two, three, four. We have to be next to the shadow token and the uh, we have to be next to a shadow token to bring out a sunless apparition. All right, that's a key. So I think we'll just do this. We'll loot one here and teleport to here. All right, so... Um, Chris, oh, let me kill this archer real quick. Okay, Chris is looting. She gets a coin. All right, good for her. We want Emmy to get the wood tokens, don't we? No. We actually want, Chris wants to do all the looting. She wants the wood tokens. That's right. Okay, and she gets a health. Start a return. All right. Now, um, long rest. There's no enemies out here. So we're basically not even going to bot. Well, we'll do next round. I don't think it's going to matter. We're going to say 99. And Chris, 99, and draw, and that's all we do. All right, uh, choosing cards to go lost. Everybody heals up, and we get our items back. Which is super nice. Um, okay. So, card going lost. Um, boop, 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 doo, doo. We're going to want those for sure. I want that plus one to attack. Tip of the spear, banner spear, set for the charge. That's a good move, and I feel like we're going to need some good move cards. Oh, these are all good cards. We're just going to say Rally and Cry goes lost. Okay. Get everything back. And for Chris...
once we get into this new room, I feel like we're going to be doing Eclipse to drop all those shadow tokens out. Um, Anger of the Dead. Um, I think Dark Fog. I mean, I don't really know. I'm still... Still learning these characters, but we'll just say Dark Fog. I don't want to th overthink it too much, just to keep the game moving. We're already an hour and a half into the stream here. So, um, moving and looting. And setting things up. That's only for one round. Um, that's a move one, loot one. Move four, loot one, move to hex with this. Um, could eclipse now and teleport up that way? That seems, that seems overkill or unfortunate. Um, we're leaving our banner behind, banner of hope. We can't bring it with us. We do need to move into the next room. One, two, three, four would open the next room. And a basic move would let uh, Chris just basic loot. Yeah, we'll do that because we want Chris to get all the loot. So move four and be ready for something. Um, We open this door. Is there going to be something right on the under, other side of this door? Set for the charge. You know what? Let's just hope there's something right there in front of us that can get to us. Otherwise, it's going to be wasted. But hey, that's both of my move four cards. That might be unwise. Instead, I wonder if I move to... One, two, and let Chris move to. That would put her on the loot token. And then she could, is there something she wanted to do on the bottom? Um, oh, Fluid Knight has a cool bottom, but it's also our biggest attack on the top. That's why I've never really looked at the bottom. Whenever you would suffer damage, you may instead teleport to a hex with a shadow token, remove the shadow token, negate the damage, and discard this card. So you can set it up as a one-time get out of harm, but I, can't, I feel like we need that plus five attack on the top. Um, you know what? She could put out another... Um, just one more shadow token within two. Yeah, she could do that with her bottom. We don't have any top moves, do we? No, so we're not getting that door open. So that... And Emmy doesn't really have any top set up for the scenario cards. All of hers are summons on the bottom, or they are set up for one round kinds of things. Yeah, I want to see what we're dealing with. It's worth both move four cards. Um... One, two, three, four, just to get the door open. And then get set for the charge. And then, um, one, two, three, four, put her right behind. And 
and set up call to the abyss. Yeah. Oh, call the abyss, it has to be something you are attacking, but at least it's setting it up for later. So we'll do that. And um, if she had move five, that would be awesome. Or just a move two. Move four. Um, she doesn't have much good move here. So we're going to do basic move um, just with 14. There we go. Quit thinking. First card I looked at, it's just what we're going to take. All right. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Next round. Chris, 14. Emmy, six. Yep. One, two, three, four. So we are opening door number one. Read 27.1. Dodging boulders on the side of a mountain wasn't quite how you imagined spending the morning. But you make it to the overlook without getting crushed. However, just before you pull yourself over the final ledge, a voice carries over the wind, stopping you. Foul ice pissers! It shouts in a deep, commanding cry. You're nothing but petty blasphemers twiddling in your caves. You make it over the ledge and see the owner of the voice pinned between two boulders. She's clearly an algox, but she is dressed much differently from the brutes who were just hurling boulders at you. Larger than her male opponents, she wears ornate battle garb that marks her as a prominent member of a different faction. She turns to you with snarling hatred, but softens when she realizes you're not friends of her enemies. Quickly then, warm bloods, help me fight these dirt lovers. Aid me, and I swear to aid you. Her hand, though pinned, glows with a crackling blue energy. Special rules. The Algox priest is an ally to you and an enemy to all other monsters. If all revealed enemies are dead, the Algox priest focuses on moving toward and opening door number two. If the Algox priest dies, the scenario is lost. When door number two is open, read 6.1. Interesting. All right. Well, our door is here, as I'm sure you could have guessed. That is door number two. Oh, there's a two. Can't figure out where from it. There's a two. It's not going to take me forever to find a two. All right. What else do we have out here? We've got... A stone boulder right there with a normal whatever this thing is right here. That is an Algox Scout. No, that is the Algox Priest. Okay. Uh, we have a normal 
Algox Scout up here. And these things are too big to uh, lay down and fit in the hex so that you can see them. Another boulder right here. Good enough. And then we've got Archer right here. Archer, uh, Elite Archer. Okay, that's a bummer. So we need regular on the priest, regular on the um, scout up here, and elite on another archer right over here. Does that look right? Let me make sure I have everything. There's the priest. Uh, boulder, boulder, archer, archer, and scout. Okay. So we have archer. Do I have to next round before I can add somebody? Oh, I have to do the plus. Okay. Uh, four. And Archer Elite is... Oh. Six. Looked at the wrong number, and it's easiest to change the bases rather than changing the app. All right, four and six. And then we have a priest regular, number four. And then we have a scout regular, number five. Yes, and we were going on 6 and 14. So our round number is going to be off, but that's okay. We still go before all, the, the, all that they do. All right, so Priest is on our side. Okay, we are set for the charge. So we need to remember that for... Uh, Emmy here. Is this uh, scout going to come up to us? No. Just going to attack adjacently. So our charge was wasted. That's all right. Next, that was Emmy. Chris is doing. Uh, what did we decide she was going to do? Um, basic move. And then drop a shadow token within two. So put a shadow token right there. And then she will end of turn loot here. And hey, she got lumber. Oh, that makes us super happy. All right. Rare, but she needs lumber for her life goal, her quest. Okay, that's all that she's doing. Now, the priest moved to heal three, range three. Well, fortunately, she's on our side. Um, unfortunately, we don't need any healing because we forgot to heal Chris, thanks to the Banner of Hope, but that's okay. So heal two, range three. She is still trying to hurt the enemies and such. Um... She's only got six health. Oh, she does have shield one, so that's good. 
All right, uh, that was the priest. Um, everybody's full health. All right, the archer. Uh, move one. So both the regulars and elite move one, and then they attack at range four. So um, getting closer here. One, one, two, three, four. Too far away. Still too far away. But um, if we move one like that, then that one can't move. And we can choose how they move. So there you go. And the elite does go first. So the elite cuts off the regular. Nice. But nobody is within range four. Two, three, four. Yep. They're all too far away. Um... Okay. Interesting. Okay, then the scout attack four with poison, um, but nobody's adjacent, so nobody to attack. All right, well, that was a nice, easy round. Next round. Here we go. Okay. We don't necessarily know what the priest is going to do, but we need to get in front of the priest. So, um, move all of them up two spaces, or put out three within three. Move three, poison one adjacent. One, two, three. So she can move onto the door. And then she could kind of just create a wall of shadow tokens right here. That would be interesting. Because there is a wound. But I think that card went lost. Or I didn't bring that card out. Wounding whenever they go through a shadow. Yep, it's down here. So we don't have a stamina potion to bring it back into our hand. But that would have been nice. Um, is this the room for Eclipse and getting all the shadow tokens out on the board? Um, yeah, it would give us some pretty big attacks here in a, in a little bit. Um, so I think it's going to be that. She's going to be going late, but it will get her kind of into the game. And then, um, what is Emmy going to do? She has more allies out here now. She's not going to have anybody close by. So I think she's going to throw the javelin. How big is this scout? Eight health. Fortunately, he's just a regular. So that's going to that's gonna help. So let's... Um, there we go. Move three, grant two allies within three, move three. That'll, that'll get us closer. But do we really want to be driving into, I mean, keep the archers back where they are for a little bit at least. If I move to and let that priest move to, can that set up pincer movement or resolve courage? No. I need to move three to get next to that scout. So, yeah, but it's going to be javelin to get the scout. And I only need to move two to it, and I'll let them move two. So, 21 and 32. All right. Uh, but, well, it's not the end of the world. That's not going to let Chris move because she moves after Emmy. Um, but that's okay. I don't really have a good way to get her. One, two, three. 
Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't have any moving further. So and we need to get those shadow tokens out here. So give us some options. That is what it is. All right, Emmy, 21, Chris, 64. All right, the priest goes first. Drain strength, move two, attack one, range three, disarm. Oh, how cool is that? So already has an enemy at range three, so does not have to move. So it's going to attack one and disarm. So the scout. Ow. All right, the next person to loot is going to get a hide, and whoever loots is going to get this. So hit the wrong thing here. So scout disarmed. And we need from the monster deck a minus one, so no damage, but does disarm, which is awesome. All right, uh, Emmy, uh, move two, one, two, and I feel like we'll put the priest right here. Yeah, and then attack three, range three. So attack three on the scout. Minus one, two damage on the scout. That was Emmy. Okay, that's those cards there. Next is archers. Um, they do not move, but a couple of idiots out here moved within range four. One, two, three, four. All right, this one cannot see the priest at all. Um, the elite could see either one of us. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're both at range four. Um, oh, it is target two, so I don't even have to decide. So it's target two. Elite is attack three, range four. So attacking Emmy first. Uh, attack three. Plus zero, so that's three on M. And then attack three on the priest. Okay. And then the regular does not see the priest, but can see Emmy. So the regular attack two. Zero, so Emmy takes two more. Not good. Not, not good. All right, Chris, moving three. One, two, three. Poison somebody within range one. She's not going to do that part of it, but then she's going to drop out her last, her other three shadow tokens within range three. Card goes lost. So we'll just make a nice little wall here. One, two, three. But all five are now out on the board, which gives her an attack six melee, which is nice. All right, that's Chris. Uh, the Algox Scout is disarmed and does not move. So that's the end of his or her or their turn. All right, next round. Okay. Down to four cards. All right. Um, oh, man, it'd be nice if we had that uh, fog cloud, but I think we let that thing go lost, didn't we? Yes, we did. All right. Well, Chris definitely wants Strength of the Abyss because it's an attack six, but it's a melee. So she needs to move three to get up to that scout. And she cannot. 
She can teleport to a hex. Oh, this is perfect. She can loot one and teleport to a hex with a shadow token. So there you go. She's going to loot one and then teleport and then attack six on the scout. Awesome. All right. Um, Emmy, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, heal all allies. That, I think that's worth doing, actually. Heal three all allies. We've got to keep this priest alive. We're all damaged, so we're going to do that. And then grant two allies within three, move three. Well, that'd be kind of cool. Um, oh, no. Resolved courage. Because, um, yeah, this is a nice combo. Chris is going to be adjacent to Emmy when she shows up on a shadow token. And so she's going to get a plus one on her attack. A look at our banner spear inspiring her team. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So that means Emmy is going on 10. And Chris is going on 50. Drain speed. All right. Move one. Attack two, range three, immobilize. Oh, that's even perfect because we don't really want that scout moving anywhere. All right, already within range three does not have to move, so it's attack two, and the scout is immobilized. Um, I'm surprised the app did not automatically take off the disable or the disarm. Maybe it's because I didn't actually click through his turn. That could be it. All right, attack two, plus zero. So two more on the scout. And he is immobilized. Very good. Emmy, setting up Resolved Courage. And heal three, all allies. Oh, she's not going to heal herself. And she's going to take two more damage. You know what? It's worth it. All right. Uh, so Emmy takes two damage. Uh, our priest heals three. And Chris was already at max. So Emmy only takes one damage, not two. That's, uh, that's not that bad. It's worth taking one damage so that the priest can get three. I count that good. And she does get an XP for it. So there you go. Well, that's worth it. All right. And she's going to give Chris plus one attack. When Chris's turn is up, the archers are setting a trap. They move one. They attack two or three range five. Create one three damage trap in an adjacent empty hex closest to an enemy. All right, so moving one, they actually don't need to move because they have enemies at range five. So we do need some trap tokens here. Let me uh, grab some of those real quick. I found the trap tokens. I can't find my damage tokens. I'm not using them since I'm using the app here, but uh, I'll hunt for them later. So, boom, elite creates damage, a three damage trap right there. That's an adjacent hex closest to the enemy. And attack three for range five on Emmy. 
Um, whew, not good right now. Not good. Let's hope for a miss. Plus one is four. Uh, Emmy, she's got shield, or we could just negate the damage. Um, oh, oh, that's... Because this other one's going to be shooting as well. Um... Mm, mm, tough choice. Stay alive with one hit point. I'm going to be losing a card either way. So, yeah, let's do that and then hope for a miss. So, um, so Emmy is down to one. Oh, and here we thought it was Chris that was going to go down. All right, and then uh, the regular shoots uh, attack two. Minus one is one. Create three damage trap right there. It is a, oh, she can actually take that because she has one more hit point than we have. So now she is at one out of 11 because of her traveling cloak. We don't need to lose a card. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to do it that way. Okay. That was the archers. Um, Chris's turn. Oh, this is going to be awesome turn. All right. Glad we got to hear loot one. So, and we know that she looted this hide over here. Boom. So that's taken care of our misclick earlier. And then um, teleport to a hex with a shadow token right there. And then attack X plus one, where X is the number of shadow tokens on the map. So it's attack six plus one from Resolve Tur Courage, attack seven. All right, here we go. Attack seven plus zero is still enough to take down our scout. Scout is dead. And we have a loot token. All right. Um, no more scout, guard. That is the end of the round. OK. Next round. All right. Um, you know what? It's going to be easy. I've got two cards in either in each hand. And so we're just going to put them out there and think about what to do with them once we see what the enemies are going to do. Um, none of these went lost, right? I did the top there and the bottom there. All right. Ooh. This works out nice. Move all up to two and attack five. So we're going to move uh, here. Uh, can I move shadow tokens onto obstacles? Um, so there's, okay, you create shadows, place in, in any hex except hexes beyond wall lines and hexes with other shadows. I can't move through. Um, can enter any hex without hindrance and stop in any hex except those with another shadow token. Um, all right. The hex is a sh sh the, the hex a shadow is in is considered adjacent to the shadow for the purpose of targeting and when for an attack is occupying that hex. I understand the term from the hex. Okay. That's all very good. Okay, that's a great two cards to have because we're going to be able to snipe one of those archers. We can actually move a shadow to here and attack the basic from right there. All right, Emmy kind of needs to run away. Um, she can heal within range two, including herself, and give herself regenerate. So that's, that's what she's going to do. And she can move one, loot one. 
So as long as she goes early enough, which she's going to go on 25, uh, she might get that loot token, which could make Chris unhappy, but she'll live. Uh, Chris is going to go on 24. Hopefully before these archers. That would be super happy day. Otherwise, we've got problems here in uh, Frosthaven City. All right. Oh, I just noticed the app is showing uh, the paragraphs I need to read. Oh, and when you click on the paragraph, it brings up what you're supposed to be adding. Oh, how awesome is that? I wondered how it was going to help us do that. Very good. Very good. Well, we'll do that for the next one. Okay, and we are going before everybody else. This is fantastic. All right. Black Barrage, move all shadow up to two hexes. So might as well one, two, one, two, and then we're going to go one, two, and one, two, and one, two. Okay, we did that. Now, perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow token, then remove the shadow token. Create knight and gain an XP. All right, so attack five on the regular archer right here. Something good. All right, plus one is six uh, on the on regular number four takes him or her or them out i just need to remember to just start always saying them but we do lose this shadow token not the end of the world but that's okay we already got our xp all right that is nice okay what is our priest gonna do move one and then attack three, range three. So move one, one, two, three. Hey, look, he's gonna be perfect to attack that guy at range three. So then Emmy, did I give, I gave the wrong person XP. Chris gets the XP, not Emmy. I hope that's the first time I did that. Um, you guys got to watch me in the chat and yell at me if I'm doing wrong things. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so I'm going to have to go first. Um, she doesn't really have an awesome attack. She could basic move basic attack, but that gets her right on the archer. Or she can heal herself and give herself regenerate right before she long rests and loot one, move one. So I think we already decided that's what she's going to do. <clears throat> um, the elite is going to target at range four. One, two, three. As long as she doesn't get closer than Chris... She will, um, oh, she can't loot one anyway, because that's Chris, that's not Emmy. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, we'll just move one, not loot, but, uh, Chris is going to take the hit because she went first. Um... So move one, I mean, she could basic move. She could basic move onto there, but then that puts her at range two. And we don't want her taking the hit. Uh, so we'll do that. And then we'll heal two and regenerate. All right, so that's that. And that, and then we go our archer, our elite archer moves to, doesn't need to, because it has a target within range four. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
and Chris Roll went first, so Chris Roll's the target. Attack four. That's not awesome. Another miss would be great. Minus one is three. We'll take three. All right. And then the priest. Oh, wait. Yeah. I, I already said the priest was going to move there. So uh, basic move. Actually, not even moving. Just stay put. Don't do anything, Emmy. Stay out of our way. All right, priest, move one so that can attack the archer at range three. Attack three, range three. Now a 2x would be fantastic. We'll take a plus one, so that's four damage. So now we're a basic attack away from clearing this map. All right. Um, okay. You know what? I think, are we gonna long rest? Yeah. We're gonna let the priest deal with this because um, now the priest is gonna be the target and we're gonna long rest. We're out of cards for both of our heroes. Might as well, because I think the priest can, it's only two damage away, the priest should be able to take care of it. Um, and the priest is, why isn't the priest full health? Oh, I dealt damage to the priest, not the archer. All right, one, two, three, four. Boy, that would be a bad day. All right, the archer took four damage. I thought he was eight, not six. Okay, well, so not a basic attack away, but still, we'll let the priest soak up a little bit. All right. Okay, the priest goes first. Angry Hex. Attack one, target two, range three, and curse. So it's actually, because of how this works, is going to curse his own deck. But there you go. It uh, doesn't need to move because has a target within range three. So attack one. Now would be a great time for a, uh, a plus two. No, attack one, zero, so archer takes one and is cursed. How do I add a curse to the deck? Um, let's see, is there a, here we go, curse. There. And that did go from 10 to 11, so there is a curse card in there now. All right. That was the priest. Archer's turn. Move three, attack three, range four. He's got the priest at range four, so he's going to attack three, and he's going to draw the curse, we hope. Did not, so three damage on the priest. All right, and then we heal and get our items back and choose a card to go lost. All right. Seven, let's see, we want that for sure. Want that for sure. Um, I'm thinking that one's not going to be, well, it might. Um, it's a little late in the game for that. That archer's not going to move into our line of shadows. Uh, so we'll let Anger of the Dead go lost. Be nice if we could get some push or pull. Um, we need some push or pull. There's a push. Yeah, that javelin's going to push that guy into that trap. There we go. All right. Um, oh, I don't want I need.
need some yeah we're gonna lose the resolve charge i don't think that plus one on the attack is going to be enough to make a difference okay all we got to do is get through this because we got both of our battle goals the type of rests we do doesn't matter okay so next round what are we going to do so pushing into the trap to clear that out it's a three damage trap it's move one push to range three so one two three she does need to move one somebody else needs to move out of her way though so um Let's see. Loot one and then teleport to a hex with a shadow token. Um, can move you up there. We don't have any pull, right? I don't have any, I don't see any pull anywhere. So we're going to have to go out and around that shadow token anyway. So that's fine. Because um, if you you know, loot one and move there, then you can move there, one, two, three, and push. And yeah, okay. So do you have, um, actually, we've got this again, Fluid Knight, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. That archer's going down one way or another. Um, uh, yeah, that gives us options. So, top attack uh, for... or Emmy gonna be range four but you know hopefully dead so there you go um, did we heal too yeah we did um, she's got regenerate so she needs she didn't take her regenerate from her long rest turn we need to remember that uh, Chris roll is no longer immobilized Uh, I hope that didn't screw us up. I think she got immobilized where she is right now. But if I screwed that up, I apologize. Asterisk, if so. Uh, top card to match. Um, oh, boy. Heal. Heal our priest again. Yeah, I'm going to heal and regenerate our priest. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So, Chris, 24, Emmy, 21. And draw. Okay. So, Emmy, heal, priest, 2, and regenerate. Take one for your own regenerate. And then, oh. All right, retcon. We have to go at 25. We have to go out after Chris moves out of the way. And we already said we were going to do that. And we can do that with this, 25 instead of 24. So it's in another order. So 24 actually goes first. Chris... Um, loot one. So Chris, loot one. Ooh, she got a potion component, a uh, an herb, and then teleport to a hex with a shadow. So go there, and then attack five as if you were occupying a shadow hex. So attack five right there. Attack five missing well it had to happen eventually does not make us happy 
It does make night and an XP. Um, but that it still sucks. Boo. I always hate a miss on a big attack. Um, and this shadow token goes away. Okay, now we go back to Emmy's turn. We already did the heal to the regenerate. Um, and she moves one and then push two within range three. So one, two, three, push two, take three damage. Uh, and hey, look at that. It's just enough. So it doesn't really matter that the um, fluid knight missed. Because it's going down either way. All right, and that is these two cards. All right. I'm not sure I understand. Uh, okay, Priest. Start of Priest turn. Heals one, thanks to Regenerate. And then I think we just said wants to move to door number two. Um, Moving towards an opening door number two. So the only way she can get around, she considers this an obstacle as well. So um, her move two, attack two, range three. So move one, two. So we're all conga lining around this trap over here. Okay. Good round. Good round. All right. Making progress. Now, we all just got to move. One, two, three, four to open the door. Um, it's a base for Chris, it's a basic move or it's a move three poison. Two, three. If she just basic moves, she gets to loot. We don't know how much the priest is going to move. And. Uh, Emmy has jump. She's got winged shoes. So she's going to move four. One, two, three, four, and open the door and jump. Now, is anything going to charge her as soon as she opens the door? I don't know. Uh, but just in case something does, I mean, that's... I don't know how scenarios are written too well. I don't know if that's a common thing. But none of these other tops really mean a whole lot. So that's what we're going to do. And she can do it early. So, and we, we are, you know, we're not getting super low on cards, but we do need to be cautious. So move four with jump and then set for the charge. And then move three, probably not poisoning anything so that she's right behind, which actually would get us for tip of the spear, depending on what this looks like. But we have to decide which card we're using before we do that, I think. Um, anyway, one, two, three. Um, or do we basic move? We talked about just basic moving. Um No, I think we do this. Yeah. I don't feel like we're going to want to move these things two spaces. They're getting left behind. We're going to want to be dropping out new ones. All right. So Emmy's going on six, and Chris is going on 28. All right, so Emmy six, tap your jumping boots, your winged shoes, and one, two, three, four, opening door number two, which is read paragraph 6.1. F 
finally, you make it inside the mountain, but your victory is short-lived. Just past the cave opening huddles another group of defenders, muscle-bound Algox with icy fists. They've gathered in a circle, positioned like a lord's private guard around some person of value, except all they seem to be protecting is an ice-covered gap in the floor. They guard the sky hall, your Algox companion whispers. We must break through that barrier if we are to end this fight. The guards, noticing your approach, turn and shout. You cannot pass, intruders! The Sky Hall is closed to your kind. They move quickly, uncrossing their arms and stepping forward. Your body is worn and your lungs still burn from the climb while these guards are fresh to the battle, wholly rested and prepared to brawl. But it matters little. There is no other way forward. All right. We need to now move our discards up here. Okay, we have Ice Sheet Alpha right down here. And Okay, it didn't ask us what to spawn, so maybe something's broken here. Um, let me shift this up. There we go. Now, we're, now you're seeing that. Um, okay. In this room, we have a treasure chest up here. We have got more, are these archers? No, these are, what are these? These are uh, the scouts. Yes, scouts, okay. We have a regular scout here and we have an elite scout. over here is that right yes and then we have a regular guard uh, right here next to the scout boom boom nothing right in front of us of course um, okay so we do need Scout uh, number four. No, number five is the regular. And number four is the elite. And then the regular guard is number one. All right. And we are still at six and uh, what did I say, 28? Yep. Okay, so we did our six, which was moving four with jump. And we are set for the charge. All right. Um, okay, now the priest, move one, attack two, range three. Well, the priest can't even move the one. 
unless it's her only way to get closer to the enemy. So she is going to step right through the trap. Oh, darn it. Boom. Trap goes off. She takes three damage. Well, hopefully she stays in the back. Regenerate goes away. Uh, she did regenerate one before that happened, but she was already at full health. So no point. All right. Well, that does make things easier to get through. Uh, nobody to attack in range three. All right. Algox guard. Parry and thrust not moving. Just has shield regenerate. Good for him. Chris roll. Chris, what are you doing? You, so this is not going to come into play. Just move that down here. Uh, we've talked about moving three and then attack to range four. One, two, three, four. Just one out of range. Um, we lost your uh, items because you have a crude bow, which will give you plus one to your range so you can attack five it's worth doing now um there's no knight unfortunately but uh so move three one two three attack five using the bow one two three four five very good um range five i mean so attack two range five these are discarded cards. Let me set these up here. Game takes up a lot of space. All right, so we've done that. And now we are attacking five. We've got to reshuffle. And hopefully not get that miss. So it's attack two, range five. All right. Oh, man. Uh, so the elite is 12 health. And then the regular is eight. And the other regular is seven. We got a bunch of damage we have to be dealing here. And there is a treasure over there that we want to get. Three on three. Let's hope our superior minds can do this. All right. Attack two plus one is attack three on the elite scout. And he has, what does he have? What is that? Can't see. He's got something on here. I'll have to look up what that symbol is. Um, is that the new, like, uh, vulnerable symbol? Let me see. Not ward. Impair. Cannot use items. Remove at the end of the next turn. Okay, so that is a new condition I'm not familiar with. That's new to Frosthaven. Impair. You cannot use items. Fortunately, Chris is using her item before she gets hit with one of his attacks. All right, good to know. So what did we say? Three damage on elite number four here. Okay. Now, elite greed. Um, move five with jump. I assume that's the jump symbol. It's a weird symbol for it, but... Um, that looks like, yeah, that's jump. Yep. And loot one. 
I don't think they can loot. Um, treasure chests. I think they can only loot loot tokens. The question is, does the loot token become their focus or is it still an enemy that is their focus? Um, I apologize. I am going to have to go to the rules for this one. I want to make sure it's um, it says focus is start a turn. So it's going to try and move to the enemy. Loot abilities. Monsters do not perform on turn looting unlike characters, but some monsters have loot abilities. In such cases, the monster loots all loot tokens within the specified range moving from the map. These loot tokens are not dropped by the monster when it dies. Monsters are unable to loot treasure tiles. Okay. It says nothing about changing the focus. So it's still one of us that is the focus. And if there's no loot within range one to do it, then that matters. So he's just going to move up here to Emmy, and it's a loot one, so he can't get the loot that's out of range. But that loot has actually already been looted. Chris Roll got it on the end of her turn. So we need to go back up to Chris Roll and draw a loot card. And it is a metal card. She's getting all kinds of good stuff. All right. So, move five with jump loot one. Still focusing on the enemy in front. So, boom. Right there. And then the regular also moves five, loots one. So, as close as he can. One, two, three, four. And we're going to put him right there. Because I'm almost tempted just to get tip of the spear I could short rest just to get tip of the spear back in my hand because we're set up for it perfectly oh that's tempting that is super super tempting all right um, why did the Algex guard not take his turn oh because he's not doing anything Duh. Uh, that's right we okay they got nothing to loot and then the ice sheet is just has six health and doesn't do anything all right next round boy do i do it i can't do pincer movement i can't do combined effort yeah i mean a card goes lost but it's a chance to hurt two of these guys and they're kind of blocking our way into the room Oh, set for the charge. It actually did happen. <laughs> uh, so that elite that came rushing at us suffers two damage. Even though he wasn't attacking us, he was looting. Um, all right. Elite, two damage. Very good. And yes, we are going to do it. If I end up falling exhausted by running out of cards, y'all can yell at me later, but it's my one chance to really do the, uh, what's it called, tip of the spear. So hopefully I don't draw that one. Um, I did not, I drew set for the charge, but that's okay. We're not going to need that again. And so we've got tip of the spear, and we want to go super early, which set for the charge would have been nice. Uh, but our javelin lets us do that. And it is going to let us push, get these guys out of the way. Um, okay. And our last two cards over here for Chris, we're just going to use them without even bothering or looking. So, Emmy is 21, and Chris is 50. What do we got? All right, Priest moves to attack one, range three. Boom, one, two, three. Yes. All right. 
and then the guard again is parrying and thrusting. He's just waiting. It's kind of like in the movies, you know, they only come at you one or two at a time. The other's standing around and watch. So he's waiting for his turn, which is awesome. I'm not unhappy about that in the slightest. Chris is going last. We'll look at her cards and see what she wants to do when we get there, because I don't really think any of this is going to matter yet. So uh, drain strength, move one, uh, attack one, range three, and um, disarm. That's the word, disarm. So attack one, because he is one, range one, two, three, attack one. Minus two, no damage, but he is disarmed. And that is the elite in front. So remember that. Good to have the front guy being the one who no longer has a weapon. All right, parry and thrust, shield and retaliate. We just got to remember that. Emmy is set up for the tip of the spear. So we're going to do that first. Attack three with pierce. They don't have any shields, so that doesn't matter. Um, let's do this with advantage, right? I mean, might as well. So attack three with disadvantage. Um, and it is on one attack. I think these are, I think this is one attack with two targets. I need to look. Do I, am I going to get advantage on... Both of them. And this rule book is actually very good in talking about attack actions, attacks, attack abilities, blah, 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 blah. Um, and... I know it's in here somewhere. I don't want to spend forever looking it up. Um, that's an attack ability. Anytime an attack ability is performed, a separate attack modifier card is drawn for each individual target of the attack ability. Um, da, da, da. and I think when it talks about one attack ability and actions actions, abilities um, attack ability yeah Rand indicates standard initial hex uh, that cannot be. Banner uh, performs a top action, and allies go to the direction. Area of effect. All right, it doesn't explicitly say whether this is a different attack or just another target of the same attack. Um, so, right, I'm going to say it's one attack so we get advantage for both targets. If I'm wrong, yell at me in the chat or I'll look it up later. So on the elite with advantage, that is plus three plus two is five. We'll take the plus two instead of the minus two. So that's five on the elite. That's good. And then on the regular, plus one and two X. So on the regular is six damage. It's four versus six. So I, it's probably not going to make a big difference in the outcome of this scenario. Um, but I'll take it. I'm glad to get the two X. All right sideways remind me to shuffle when I need to all right that was Emmy Chris what you gonna do can you take out either of these people um, I don't know that you can um, 
is that hex within two? Yeah, you can see that hex and it's within two. You could put a shadow token there. Um, and you could move there. Actually, you could basic move through your friend there and do an attack three on the elite. Um, or we do the bottom once Danish turns. We're not going to do that. So that could be the, uh, and that's a top. We're not, those are setting up the, the top and the bottom. We're not going to do those. Um, so basic move and attack four. Hey, we're getting raided. After match BG raiding us. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for the raid and uh, hope you enjoy. We're just about to finish up or getting close to finishing up our scenario here. Um, got a little bit to go, but we're, we're near the end in Gloomhaven scenario number two. Okay. Um, yeah. Basic move attack four. I mean, why even worry about it? Why even think, right? One, two, and then attack four uh, with that. Uh, and on the elite, attack four plus zero is still enough to take out the elite. Boom. Nice. Get rid of that and drop a loot token here. Now I bet you guys wish you could uh, loot with your attack abilities. All right, and it is the scout's turn. Move two, attack two, range three, poison. Does not need to move because he already has two targets at range two away. And Emmy went first, so he's going to attack Emmy. So attack two with poison. Attack two plus one is three. We'll use our shield to knock it back down to two. Um... So two damage for Emmy. Um, she's got regenerate. I don't think she took it at the start of her turn. And then she's going to uh, lose it and take two damage and be poisoned. That's going to be annoying. But this guard is not, or the scout is not long for this world. So it's not that bad. All right, and the ice sheet stays where it is. It's just happy waiting for us to come destroy it. All right. Um, okay, next round. Um... Does Chris want to long rest? I feel like not. She's close enough to full health. And let's just keep on going. Right? She's in the thick of it. We're going to keep moving. So she randomly loses this card, which is her apparition. That's okay. We probably weren't bringing him out anyway. Uh, five cards left in our hand. Uh, Emmy has four. Doing good. Um, okay. Do we want to set up a pincer movement? Could we set up a pincer movement? We actually could. One, two, one, two. If we go early enough. And five on the... On that... It's almost wasted. That scout only needs two. So we really need to start focusing on the guard. To do the guard, we need to get a shadow token down next to the guard. So, um, yeah, I think, I think Chris is going to stay where she is because she still is kind of squishy. And Emmy is well she's the tank she's got uh seven health 
um, or six. I think she has six and because we already factored in the traveling cloak. Um, but let's see. Yeah, if you drop one within two, one, two, and then um, attack. from it you could attack that guy for five um, so here's what we're playing with here Let's get those out of the way. hey we have a new follower RW uh, RWL dreamer I think it was um, following us. Thank you for following. I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't read very well what your username was, but throw it in the chat and thanks for being a new follower. Okay. Uh, J rock says, love the T cloak. I'm also a death walker. Awesome. I've got the T cloak on my banner spear Emmy and my death walker has boots of speed and the cruel bow. So the whole thing is my banner spears, uh, quest is to own all the items. She wants to be a merchant. So she is stocking up with all the all the cool stuff. But welcome, thanks for being here. Okay, our wilderness are, but that's okay. All right, well, thank you for being here. Great. Okay, so we're setting up pincer movement um, with that, as long as we can go before the scout at 32 which uh it's we, we got a decent shot at it and then um chris i think you want to put out a new shadow token and then what are you going to do from the top oh you can black barrage that's a ranged attack range four so that'll be nice but that is your that what lets you move all the shadow tokens we're going to want to move a shadow token up next to this guy but if actually if you're here Oh, you could put it there. So you, we might not need to move it. So yeah, we're going to do this. All right, 28. Um, that means we need to get you to go after. So you're going to go later. Totally fine. All right, Emmy's going on 32. Chris is going on 82. And hopefully the scout is long gone before then. All right. Draw. Why aren't you drawing? There we go. All right, the priest is going first, and Emmy does go before the guard. Good, so we might get the guard down. All right, priest first. Move to heal three, target, or range three. All right, well, you can only move one, but, and you can heal three, range three, um, your closest target of your allies is the one who probably needs the healing the most. Emmy. One, two, three. So thank you, priest. It's nice having a priest on your side. Everyone always disparages the clerics, but I'm glad we have a friendly Algox cleric here with us. Super powerful. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Emmy. Um, move to one, two, grant two allies within two, move to, so one, two, and unfortunately our priest is now three away, not two, so we can't grant her a move also, but we have set up a pincer movement, which is going to be attack five with muddle on this guard. We do need to reshuffle our deck. All right, here we go. All right, and unfortunately our spyglass is unavailable. Knock on wood, but for a miss, we got this guy. I should not have said anything, so I will knock on wood here very quickly. All right, and it's not the miss. 
It's the 2x. 10 damage on our Algox Scout here. So very much dead. All right, happy day. And loot token. Okay. Um, guard. Oh. Does go next. It was the guard that went next, not the scout. Oh, no, I guess it was the guard. Yeah. Or the, I, I took out the right person. Guard has not taken any damage yet. Okay, move to attack four. So, super angry. He's finally in the fight. All of his allies are out. He waited his turn. Now he comes up and takes a big old swing on Chris. Chris doesn't really have anything to do she could have made her movement 72 instead of 70 but that would not have changed anything here so she's just going to take a hit hopefully it's not a big one there is a curse in that deck still it's time for it to come up i think well not the curse but i'll take the miss all right swing and a miss let's see if we can take out this guard before he does anything Chris is going to then, um, let's see, do we want to switch it up? No, we still want to drop the shadow token. And um, she's just going to attack with disadvantage, right? I mean, why not? Uh, attack two at range, so disadvantage because the guy's right here. Uh, attack two, minus one zero so one damage on the guard does not have any shield or anything so uh first blood and so it begins all right we do still need to save enough damage to take out the ice sheet here and keep our priest alive but i think we're in pretty good shape to do all that all right nothing going lost here for emmy her last two cards. We'll look at those in a minute. Um, Chris, what do you got? You've got, we've got Fluid Knight is an attack five and we've got Strength and Abyss is an attack five because we have four of these things out here. Um, how about we poison this guy first and then attack five on him? Um, how about we attack five without the... Uh, shadow token getting lost there we go because there's one two three four that's pretty awesome we have to wait till 50 to do it but that's okay and um looks like emmy is either basic m attacking or healing people but i kind of feel like we're in pretty good health so we're not going to worry about any of that so she's just going to step up and basic attack um or she lets the priest get into the game, but I kind of want to leave the priest back where she is uh, so that she stays healthy. So yeah, basic move, basic attack. All right, uh, so might as well go early with it. Oh, next round. Emmy on 25 and Chris on 50. All right, our priest goes first, move two. Uh, attack one, range three, disarm. Awesome. One, two. One, two, three, and our guard drops his axe. Fantastic. So it's attack one. Minus one, more importantly, is disarmed. Man, this priest, MVP. I got to tell you what, really, really pulling her own weight. Uh, really, really good there. Okay. So Emmy, uh, basic move, basic attack. Uh, let's see if we can shuffle that 2x to the top of the deck again. Um, I will not do so on purpose. So if it happens, I'm not that good of a card artist. And I've explicitly stopped remembering where the card is. So, all right.
Okay. Um, attack two. Hey, I promise. I did not do that on purpose. But you got to love it when the universe smiles upon you. So guard takes four damage. And he's not immobilized. He is disarmed. Wrong thing on him. All right. What can I say? That is fantastic. All right. I need to remember that shuffling sequence in the future. Okay. Hasty Assault. Uh, move four, attack two. Doesn't really have to attack anybody. Got two people right next to him. And a new uh, opponent has entered the field of battle. And so since Emmy what goes before Crystal, he's going to try and swing at Emmy, but his axe is all slippery. So he's going to spend his turn picking it up. He is disarmed. All right. Uh, end of his turn, loses disarm. Okay. Chris roll. Uh, boom. Here we go. Attack. Um, actually, do we want to just move you over here? You can't get here. You can move three, but that's not far enough. So finish it off, Chris roll. Uh, attack five. Zero. Okay, the guard is dead. And so we still need to take down the ice sheet. Um, because I believe that was in the beginning. Yes, and the ice sheet has been destroyed. Uh, read 77.3. So remember that. We need to read 77.3. Okay. Um, so you did that. Now you can... Oh, we, we're, you were going to poison first. We didn't poison, so now we're just going to let you move. Um, loot token, but one, two, three. Scenario over loot tokens. Um, get to the scenario end. All right. Uh, and both uh, characters are out of cards. Um there's no enemies on the board. We could long rest and let the priest catch up and actually start doing stuff. Um, I kind of want to get that treasure, though, too. So um, there's no point in long resting. Let's just keep going. Unless is there a card I definitely don't want to lose? There is in Chris's deck. So, yeah, let's just long rest. All right. So next round, 99 and 99. So, hey, guess what? The priest goes first and is just going to move one, two, three. And I can't remember. Does she even target? Uh, yeah, it, it is explicit that the ice sheet is an enemy to the priest, so she will target the ice sheet, but it is out of range. Uh, range three. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Um, Emmy, healing two, which means she just loses the poison. Um, did we forget she was poisoned? Um, that priest was disarmed. That's right, did not attack. Uh, Chris Roll is going to heal too. Okay. Um, they get their items back. And then a card to go lost. We're not going to need any more reinforcements and heal anybody. So we'll let that go lost for Emmy. Our human banner spear. And... For Chris, uh, it's a choice of Call to the Abyss or Black... Oh, no, it's these two here as well. All right, uh, Lingering Rot uh, as an attack three. I definitely want Strength of the Abyss because that lets us deal a big hit. I want Call to the Abyss because that's going to let us put out our last Shadow Token. And um, maybe... We can't poison an ice sheet, so we'll hang on to Black Barrage. Not that I think we're going to need it, but there you go. All right. Um, oh, does somebody have loot? Um, pincer movement, move one, loot one. That's too far away. 
So you could move three. Yes. We'll let uh, your move two. Let's move after you loot. All right, I just want to move one, two, three, four. No. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. So, yeah. We'll, so, Emmy is going to go loot the chest because she wants items. And Chris needs wood from loot cards. If a chest gave it to her, it wouldn't help. So, you're going to end a turn loot there. And can you throw a javelin? Hey, look, you can throw a javelin at the ice sheet. Awesome. All right. So, basic move puts you on the attacking. Um, so, basic move and a bunch of attack. And if needed, we can put one down and attack again next turn. Okay, so we will go um, next round. Emmy is 21 and Chris is 28. And here we go. Hopefully we go before the ice sheet. Hey, look, we did. And our hero, um, our Algox cleric, is going to heal us on the last turn of the game. Awesome. So, uh, move four, one, two, three, four, and throw a javelin, range three, attack three. And shuffle the 2x to the top of the deck once again. Now, if I do that, you know, twice in a row, we're going to have to rewind the tape and uh, look at my shuffling. Actually, I'm going to shuffle on camera, and I'm not holding anything. <laughs> I'm not a magician. Here we go. Boom. I missed. See? Karma. It all averages out in the end. Let me move, shift this down here so you can see that. All right. That's okay. Um, we didn't really need that anyway. What we really needed was the treasure. Treasure number 32. Um, it's in the back of the, here, back of the rule book, I think. Treasure index, 32. Gain three loot cards. Well, gosh darn it, now I wish um, Chris had gone to get this treasure. That's okay, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, I do need to mark off that treasure number, 32. Um... I lost my pen, but we'll use the Sharpie. That's okay. It was 32, right? Yep, that's 32. Gain three loot cards. Well, Emmy, it's your turn. It's your birthday. Here we go. One, a coin. Two, a hide. And three. Undouble hide. All right. Well, that's cool. I can't uh, complain about that. Okay, Algox Priest, move to um, one, two, and then heal three, range three. Um, Chris roll is actually, we should have done this last time. I don't think it matters, but when a monster ability card has something like this, I believe it's all allies. It's not just like their focus or something. I believe it's all allies within range three. I'll have to go back and look. So Emmy is going to get to full health at the end of her turn because she is within range one, two, three. All right. Chris, what do you got? You've got a basic move, one, two, and then attack where X is the number of on the map, so it's going to be five again because there's four out there. So attack five on the ice sheet and getting us one more round. 
because we're one short. So this is going to be an epic. We're all going to gang up together. Here we go. Don't even have to think about it because um, you're going to drop a thing and attack with another five. Um, and then Emmy, what did we decide you were going to do? You're going to come over here and you're just going to basic move. And, oh, hey, combined effort. I haven't used combined effort before. We are going to wound the ice sheet. How about that? Um, so uh, 25. So Emmy is 25, and Chris is 24. And here we go. <laughs> the priest might get the kill. How about that? Oh, nope. Healing us again. So, uh, you know, move two. Heals everybody in range three. There you go. All right. Chris is going to get the kill. She started it. She's going to finish it. So place a shadow token within range two and then attack five from the shadow token. Remove the shadow token. Gain an XP. Create knight. So XP. So it's attack five. Minus one is four. That's still enough. And the ice sheet is dead. All right. 77.3. And of course, let's actually remove said ice sheet. Okay, what was this called? The ice wall? The ice barrier shatters with a great ear-splitting crack. Let me block things up here. Okay. The ice barrier shatters with a great ear-splitting crack as you look down through the hole to a chamber far below. A stone floor covered in strange runic symbols and a spiral of pedestals radiating out from its center. Sky Hall, it would seem. How if, however, it's much too far to simply jump. Ha! Finally, it's open! You turn to see the Algox you rescued, staring forward. She nods with a confident, satisfied frown. Those foul ice speakers cannot hope to keep this mountain now. She bends down and grabs a handful of snow, testing it between her fingers. Satisfied, she brings it to her face and whispers. The white powder flies from her hand and swirls around her. Whirling like a miniature storm, the snow lifts her off the ground and carries her gently down through the hole. Ah, the Algox calls to you from below. Are you not coming? Plenty more ice speakers to kill. On cue, the snow around you swirls into a great eddy of white and lifts you like a leaf, carrying you down through the opening, just like the Algox. As you float down, you get a grand view of the majestic open cavern that must be the Sky Hall. It is a circular layout of stone seats with a raised platform in the center that holds an ornate altar. The priest is doing something at the altar, perhaps praying, when you land, but she quickly turns and introduces herself as Lonprul, explaining the situation. According to her, this mountain, Snow Scorn, is a site of great religious significance to all Algox. However, the clans in the area are divided into two rival factions who disagree violently over how to communicate with their god. The snow speakers, led by the priest in front of you, believe their god speaks to them through the snow falling from the heavens. 
while the ice speakers, or dirt lovers, claim to commune with divinity through ice that emerges from the ground below. Currently, the ice speakers inhabit the mountain. But when their war party went out to attack Frosthaven and returned battle-weary, the snow speakers used the opening to launch an attack of their own. But there is no more time for speech, she says decisively. The battle must be raging in the mountain's heart. So if you want my help, we must head there with all haste. With that, the snow speaker chieftain turns and moves to a tunnel leading deeper into the mountain. You're not sure which side you should take here, but you know this information is valuable. If you can help turn the tide in the snow speaker's favor, you might be able to broker a truce with the victors. You follow the priest deeper into the mountain, wondering whether this is what Satha had in mind. Rewards. Gain one check mark each. Place map overlay sticker W on the map in location W, M7. New scenario, Heart of Ice, number four. And it is uh, chain linked, which I believe means it is the scenario we have to do next and cannot go back to Frosthaven. And we have been locked out of scenario number three, the Algox Offensive. All right, so let's get caught up on all of that. Since we have to go right into this new scenario, I'm not going to take the time. I can't. We're not going to do an outpost phase. So this is actually pretty convenient time-wise. So let me get the map going here. All right, let me grab some uh, stickers and get us caught up. Okay, uh, so we are locked out of three. So I'm going to check mark number two, and I'm going to X out number three. Okay, uh, and then we have number four, which is chain linked. So we are headed there next, no matter what. The Heart of Ice. Uh, and it looks like we've got a lot of options after we get through this thing. And what does that symbol mean? Oh, boss scenario. Yay. That's a boss scenario. This uh, little red symbol right here. Shoot that over there. So there we go. Boss scenario. But we're going to have some options after this. All right. So get that out of the way, get uh, these out of the way for Heart of Ice. Ah, first we have to put down W. That's why I couldn't find a number four on here. And that's why they told us to put down letter W. Because that's where it is. All right, so we have... Oh, goody, it's going to be right on a fold, I guess.
I'm not getting these exactly right, but close enough. I would make my brother do this if he were here because he's a lot more detail-oriented and precise than I am. It actually looks pretty good though. I don't think I did too bad. All right, now we can put the four down. All right, and that's where we're headed next. Okay. Um, now we need to go through the uh, end of scenario stuff. Uh, ending a scenario, okay. All of our cards, we can do that later. Dials, conditions, gain experience, gain gold. Um, all right. So we played that at level one. So um, we got one perk each just from the scenario rewards. So Chris is going to get a perk. And then battle goals, Chris gets two more perks because she was an assassin. And Emmy gets a perk for being, can't even remember what it was, a prohibitionist. She never used a potion. Easy when you don't have any. So that gets her a perk. Nice, they both get perks. All right, um, XP, uh, scenario level one, bonus experience is six plus. Let's come back over here. All right, uh, five each, so they both get 11. So 20, 30, and 31. Haven't leveled up yet. And then gold conversion is two per. So we need to record all of the uh, loot cards. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't notice this before. Scenario lost, you choose to either return to Frosthaven for an outpost phase and gain resources from the loot cards, or you replay the scenario immediately and do not gain resources from loot cards. Well, we can't go back to Frosthaven. And we completed it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, gain resources, gain check marks. So I got to do a perk for everybody, read the conclusion, gain the rewards. Uh, we need two inspiration. Where's my party sheet? Here it is. Uh, inspiration is now six. So we have building supplies once we ever make it back to town. Uh, update the map, which I did. Or play the link scenario immediately. All right, so uh, we need to talk about here. We've got um, Chris has one coin for two more gold, giving her 14. Emmy has one coin for two more gold, giving her eight. And then Emmy has three hide. She already had one, so it's now four. Dummy. Okay. And then Chris has all kinds of stuff. Uh, she got a lumber card, so I just need to mark that off. Then she has two metal. She didn't have any metal before, so that's her first metal. She has two more hide, so now she's back up to two. Uh, two lumber, had one, so now she's at three. And the arrow vine, which is not one she had before. So that might let us actually brew a potion here in a little bit. Um, but first, let's go through perks. 
tuning our deck. I almost always take out the bad stuff first before I worry about adding good stuff. So uh, Chris is going to remove two minus one cards. And then, um, wow, Emmy doesn't have a whole lot of take out bad stuff. Interesting. Um, We can take out a minus one with a shield and redraw card. That's, we can also ignore item, negative item effects and remove a negative one card. Um, there is better armor in there and she does now have a bunch of hide. So we're gonna do that one. It lets us take out a minus one card and we can start um, ignoring the uh, negative one effects on certain item cards. So there we go. Um, I will, actually it's easy because they're all right here because all I'm doing is taking out things. So that goes away for Emmy and for Chris. It's two of them going away. I don't have to pull out any new ones. So those two go away. All right. We are set. I'm going to clean up uh, off camera, but uh, I want to, oh, sorry. I hope those haven't been sitting there for too long. I always forget about my green screen. It's going to really suck if those have been sitting there for the last half hour. Oof. Um, I think I would have noticed because I do look up and check my monitor every so often. Uh, that is it for this scenario. Uh, I am out of town on vacation all next week, uh, so I will not be here. I do get back on Thursday, so there's a small chance I'll play next Friday, uh, but certainly at least once the week after that. So just stay tuned to your uh, notifications. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, um, and uh, or at least uh, follow us so you can get notified when we start up a new game. There's lots of great content here on the channel, lots better than me. Some fantastic painting and uh, obviously game night and the, all the things they do. So I wanna thank you all for spending some time here with us today. And we will uh, catch you next week, hopefully, if not for sure, the week after. Thanks. <laughs>